Christians, we are on to chapters 15 and 16 tonight. Chapter 15 is Jesus Keeps His Cool. Ew, yelled everybody as we came into the classroom. Yucky worms sat on every chair. Jimmy and Jaden were chortling. We caught on quick. Those critters were actually gummy worms. Zuri Claire stared at the two perps, picked up her worm, and popped it into her mouth, just as cool as that. Then everybody laughed and did the same. How do I get this bunch to settle down? <clears throat> Anybody here named Hananiah, Mishael, or Azariah? How about Stink Breath? Hey, that got your attention. These three guys with wild names that also had cool meanings. Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah means God is gracious, who is equal to God, and God has helped. They were friends of a brilliant young Hebrew, Daniel, whose name means God is my judge. They were all carted off to Babylon, where the king hoped to brainwash them so they'd become loyal Babylonians and happily work for him. The chief of staff under Babylon's king Nebuchadnezzar gave them new Babylonian names with really lame meanings. Daniel became Belteshazzar, meaning the false god Bel protects my life. Hananiah was called Shadrach, commander of the moon god. Mishael got Meshach, who was like the moon god. And Azariah got Abednego, servant of the false god Nebo. Old Nebuchadnezzar was determined to make them forget the true God. But Daniel and his pals followed God and did what was right, which was not easy in Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar was a huge show-off and built this ginormous statue to himself, 90 feet tall and 9 feet wide. He gave a whack of order that whatever, whenever his band's horns blasted and the flutes fluted and the trombones tromboned, everybody must fall to the ground and worship the statue of gold, or else. I mean, is that crazy or what? The music plays and idol worship follows. I wonder if this band was named Babylonian Beboppers. Maybe the Babylonian Beatles or the Babylonian Believers. But Daniel's friend said, nope, not going to fall down and worship a dumb statue. I'm pretty sure Daniel would have agreed. But he's not in this part of the story. Daniel had become an important official in Babylon, so he was probably away on government mission. Anywho, King Neb got really ticked and ordered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to come see him. He sneered. So you're not worshipping my statue, huh? If you don't do what I say, then I'm going to burn you alive. What God will be able to save you from my hands? They answered, Sorry, king, we only worship God, and you ain't him. If we're thrown into the fiery furnace, the God we serve will be able to save us. But even if God doesn't, we will never worship your golden statue. The king got so mad, his face squished up like a raging raccoon, and he ordered the men to heat the furnace seven times hotter than usual. He ordered the strong, muscle-bound guards to tie up the three Hebrews and throw them into the blazing furnace. In they went, ropes and all. The fire was so raging hot that it burned up the muscle-bound dudes that threw our guys in. It really looked like God's plan was to build a nation was all washed up, or all burned up. The Israelites had lost their own land, and these few who love God were about to die. So how was the Savior ever going to come from these people? That's when Jesus entered the story. The king was all set to toast some marshmallows on a super, super long stick when he stopped, looked in deep into the fire, and exclaimed, Hey, who's those wise guys in there, and who can't count? Didn't we throw three men into the furnace? His advisors whipped out calculators and did the math. Uh, yep, yep, three is the right answer. Imbeciles, look, the king roared. I see four men walking around in the furnace. No ropes, they're not burning up, and the fourth man looks like a god. The king's advisors were all like, uh, sorry, king, our calculator batteries just died. See, it was Jesus, Jesus in the fire with the three friends, keeping it real, keeping it cool. And that's a really cool, comforting thought, if you ask me. Nebuchadnezzar came as close as he dared to the furnace door and shouted, Dudes, servants of the Most High God, come out! So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stepped out, and everybody crowded around. Guess what? The guys, they weren't burnt at all. Not one single hair on their head was singed, and they didn't even smell like smoke. Nebuchadnezzar changed his tune and ordered everybody not to say anything bad about the God that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego worshipped. If they did, they'd be torn limb from limb, and their houses be smashed. Old King Neb never did anything halfway. The king announced, there is no god who can rescue like this. The three friends got promotions and lived happily ever after. Well, as happily as three dudes in captivity in Babylon could live. 
One thing didn't change. They followed God wholeheartedly all the days of their lives, and that's cool. Remember, if somebody gives an order that God wouldn't like, then don't do it, even if you're thrown into a fiery furnace. See you footloose freewheelers next week. Kirby's notes stick inside your brain. I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. Psalm 16, 8. Want to read more? Check out Daniel chapters 1 and 3. Chapter 16. Jesus and a hot fudge Sunday. Dear Zuri Claire, I think you're cool. Sincerely, Kirby. That's what I wrote. I gave the note to Emma, who gave it to Olivia, who gave it to Aggie, who gave it to Aisha, who gave it to... Oh no! Jimmy just intercepted the note. Oh man, I'm doomed. He read it out loud to everybody. I gotta do something. Gotta distract Jimmy. Gotta go teach right now. Ahem! Toward the end of the Old Testament, the coming of Jesus is predicted a bunch more times by people called prophets. These were folks who went around giving others messages straight from God. The prophets focus a lot on the idea of longing for Jesus. Not an idea kids talk about much these days. Maybe you long for your birthday to come or long for a loved relative to visit. Maybe you long for a triple-decker hot fudge sundae with extra whipped cream. We often long for something. It means we eagerly wait for it to arrive. The prophets really longed for Jesus, really looked forward to when he'd come to earth as the Messiah, the one who'd save the world. Jimmy just sneezed on the note. He was reading it, and a big, ha, ha, ha exploded out of his nose all over it. And he wiped his old honker with my note. My note's for Zuri Claire. Can't let myself get distracted. <clears throat> One prophet who longed for Jesus and wrote a lot about looking forward to seeing him is Isaiah. He predicted Jesus will rule from Jerusalem one day. Like the Chief Justice of the World Supreme Court, he'll settle international disputes. The world will be at peace then, and instead of going to war, people will hammer their swords and spears into tools for plowing and planting. Probably that means tanks, guns, nuclear bombs, and even lightsabers will become tractors and combines and other farming tools to help grow food, because there won't be any wars to fight. Once in a vision of heaven, Isaiah saw the Lord seated on a throne, a pretty amazing sight. Angels surrounded the throne, each with six wings, and called out to each other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of heaven's armies. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Their voices shook the building to its foundation and filled it with smoke. And Isaiah said, It's all over. I'm doomed. I am a sinful man with filthy lips, and I live around a whole bunch of people with filthy lips. Yet I've seen the Lord of heaven's armies. An angel flew to Isaiah with a burning coal from the altar and touched him on the lips. Don't worry, the angel said. Your sins are forgiven. Later, Isaiah was told a virgin would have a child, and the name of the baby would be Emmanuel, meaning God with us. This is exactly what Jesus fulfilled when he came to us. He was born of a virgin, Mary, and Jesus was God on earth. Hundreds of years before it happened, Isaiah told Je just how Jesus wouldn't look like regular kings when he came to earth. He wouldn't appear majestic, wear a royal robe and stuff. Instead, he would be disliked, misunderstood, and rejected. A king who knew what grief was all about. He'd be crushed for our sins, beaten so we could be whole, whipped so that we could be healed. Ultimately, although the crushing and beating and whipping was totally bad, it was going to be a good day because Jesus' suffering would mean that sins could be pardoned. Sad days would eventually end and the glory of the Lord would be revealed. Another prophet, Malachi, predicted that a messenger would come ahead of Jesus to announce him. The prophet Micah pinpointed the exact spot where Jesus would be born, the little town of Bethlehem. The prophet of Zechariah predicted that Jesus would ride into Jerusalem in a in triumph on a donkey. He would... His side would be pierced, he'd be betrayed, and he'd be sold for 30 pieces of silver. Yep, centuries before it happened, the exact price was named. The prophet Daniel predicted that Jesus would come to earth, not just once, but twice. And Hosea predicted that Jesus would spend a season in Egypt. If all this sounds like really good news, it is, and that's only a fraction of what the prophet said about Jesus. But there's one prophecy that's really bad news. The prophet Jeremiah spoke it, and in it's big time horrible. It involves blood and guts and sorrow, and there's nothing funny about it at all. If you want to be prepared, I want you to be prepared, because I'll tell you about it soon. So brace yourselves. For now, remember, 
lots of people really looked forward to Jesus' first coming, and Jesus is going to come again. And you look forward to a second, are you looking forward to his second coming? No one except God knows the date, but it could be any day now. See you next week on the Metaverse. Kirby's notes, stick inside your brain. Holy, 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 the Lord of heaven's army. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Isaiah 6, 3. Want to read more? Read Isaiah 2, 3 through 4, Isaiah 7, 14, and Micah 5, 2. See you tomorrow.